You know that feeling you get exploring an open world game for the first time? It feels like you're just aimlessly wandering around, going down paths without knowing where they'll take you. It's confusing at first. But as you play more, your mental map of the world builds out, and you can plan routes to your objective without even needing the actual map. But I prefer the period before that. I like when you don't know anything about the world. There's a sense of wonder and discovery as you experience it for the first time that can never be recaptured. You stumble into little pockets of the world that you'll never see once you become familiar with the game. Because at that point, you're on autopilot. All the little crevices and crannies in the landscape fade away, and you don't really pay attention to any of them. Today, we're going spelunking in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, looking for spots that are welcoming, unwelcoming, or just otherwise bizarre. This game's world is very porous after all. There's a ton of little cavities to explore. Welcome to Video Game World Tours. First spot is in the Storm Drain. I like that you can pick up a ton of speed driving through here. This feels like a safe space. No drivers will change lanes in a millisecond or speed through an intersection and surprise you. It's free and open. The spot I want to focus on is at the far western end of the storm drain. Here it starts to go under the city, so you have some tunnels. In this particularly warmly lit one, there's a little chunk cut out of the side of the wall. A tiny, winding slope leads you to a door that you can't go through. I guess in-world, it probably leads to an access tunnel that takes you somewhere important. But Carl here isn't worthy enough to enter it, so all he, and by extension we can do, is just observe from the outside. I love details that hint at a larger world beyond what you can physically explore. It gets you thinking about the theoretical real version of this world like all the industrial space in the southeastern part of the city. Not a lot of missions bring you to these lots, and it feels like there's a ton of space that goes unused. But in world, this all does have a purpose. All these factories and docks, they are no doubt important to the city of Los Santos. But in the world of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, they're just kinda set dressing. Decorations to make the world feel just a tiny bit more believable. Spots that you'll likely never see if you don't purposefully go out of your way to find them. I have such a deep appreciation for places like that. Next up is a spot super close to where you start the game. It's a place you've driven by dozens of times, and maybe you've even taken your girlfriend on a date here. But outside of that, have you ever walked in this bar? Well, uh, it's certainly something. I'll give it that. It feels kinda sad. I think it's the lighting. If it was warmer, it'd be a bit more welcoming. Get some wood paneling and moody lights. That'd be proper comfy. A lot of artwork on the walls. Wonder how much of this is reused outside of these bar interiors. Cool dragon. I like all these stickers and posters. Bobo and Base 5 here are in-world clothing brands. That's a fun little inclusion. Some more stuff on the wall. I bet it's fun to be an artist and come up with tiny little jokes for these. Though I have to wonder if there's a joke I'm missing with some of them. MYM710. Does that have any meaning? Perchance. I'm not a bar guy, so I don't really want to spend too much more time here. I just thought it was interesting that this location is actually enterable. The only thing you can physically interact with in here are the pool tables and arcade machines, which is cool I guess. A spot that's not really detailed but still interesting to me is this little alley near a tattoo parlor. We'll start on this end and take a jaunt through the whole path here. It starts off uneventful, but then you come across an alcove. Maybe this is where the dumpster for the building goes? Though it's not here right now. Maybe the Ballas took it. We'll mourn this loss another day. We got an alley to explore. Ooh, some steps leading up. Okay, okay, this is cool. Get a nice little vantage point. This would be a pretty good spot to defend yourself from an onslaught of enemies. Alright, back down to ground level. An exit to the street, no thank you. Another exit. But what's this? Huh, 
A truly bizarre spot. There's nothing back here. No weapon pickup, no graffiti to spray over, no anything. I wonder if something was planned for this, but it was removed. Or maybe they forgot about it. Or maybe this was truly intended. Maybe John Rockstar himself carved out this nook of Los Santos and thought it was super crucial to the believability of this world. God bless him for that. That's it for the alley. I just thought that was a super interesting spot. Hmm, while we're here, we might as well check for any interesting details in the pizza place. I'm sure there's something just waiting to be discovered. Eh, those are just normal meals hanging from the ceiling. Nothing special there. Ooh, a normal menu with tiny text. What do we have here? Interesting. These prices aren't too different from today's pizza prices. In fact, I could probably get some cheaper pizzas from Domino's literally 20 years later. Though maybe that was the joke back in 2004. They made everything super expensive. Wait a minute. Beverages? Deserts? Are those genuine typos? Oh, I always forget, Rockstar was established across the pond. Maybe that's the thing over there? I feel like I'm always learning about weird things like that. Maybe it is. Or maybe it's not, and I'm just stupid for assuming a typo as bad as this could be a regional spelling. Though does that reflect more on me or them? Uh, anyway, let's go behind the register. I don't think the minimum wage workers will mind. Okay, I have no idea what's going on with this hygiene flyer. Maybe you can make some sense of it. Fire blanket. Suitable for that. Also suitable for... That's a person wrapped up there. I wish I could read that text. Man, there are probably so many jokes in games from this era that people will just never get because textures were so low resolution. This text could be the funniest joke in the world, but nobody can read it past wrapping around. That's enough texture inspecting. I kinda wanna talk about just the general vibes of the world for a moment. It's so warm, both in terms of the colors used and the emotional feeling it leaves you with. The orange tint of this world is so unique. Compared to the two other Grand Theft Auto games I've covered on the channel, 3 and 5, they're both so much cooler environmentally. It feels more realistic, to be honest. But artistically, I prefer this. It's so much more stylized. It feels straight out of a dream, having the sunset color scheme exist throughout the whole day. This is the look of Los Santos. The game just wouldn't feel right if it was cooler around here. It's genuinely an outlier compared to all the other games in the series. Regarding my personal experience with the game, the unfamiliarity I had with the game world mixed with this color scheme really messed with my mind. Maybe I'm just slow at mentally piecing together a world, but it took me a while to really feel like I understood the layout. I mean, I guess I'm still not quite at 100%. If you told me to reach Mad Dog's Mansion from Grove Street, I'd kinda just bob and weave between streets without any real plan. But early on, I was especially terrible about it. Going back to the dream thing, it feels like one of those dreams where you turn a corner and everything completely changes. It was so hard to keep track of where I was, especially downtown with all the tall buildings blocking sight lines. I still can't traverse this city well. Though I do have a few spots to talk about. There's this one building you come to during a super intense mission. It's got some nice modern architecture on the outside. But for some reason, you can go back inside. Usually, when a mission brings you inside a building, you can't return after you complete it. This one is special though in that you can. And it's not like there's any reason to. Well, there's an armor pickup, I guess, but there's no shortage of them in this world. It's nice that you get to appreciate the layout outside of the hectic gunfight you find yourself in the first time around. The aesthetic is beautiful. Greenery draping from the upper floors, masterfully crafted sculptures, and this eye-catching statue. What a tasteful piece. You can visit the upper floors if you want to, but only do it if you really want to, because there's no reward for doing it, just some bland doors. I guess you get a view of the street outside? You can see the edge of this interior over there. It's cool that they recreated the street in front of the building here instead of making this window opaque. You can even see people walking on the sidewalk. How cute. Going out the other entrance of the building, you get a bit more of the nice architecture. This actually feels straight out of a Tony Hawk game. 
I can imagine grinding and ollieing between these ledges. Funnily enough, there's another space in this game that reminds me of a Tony Hawk level. Man, I just want to be able to skate around this world. There's a similar outdoor area downtown. This feels like a spot that should be bustling with people, but the random NPC count is pretty low in any given area, and this little plaza wasn't given any NPC spawns. Nobody will walk through here. It's a ghost town. Ominous. Oh, is this a theater? The box office windows, a vending machine, some chairs to sit around in and wait? That'd explain it. Huh, there's some ledges up there. I love walkways that are just out of reach of the player. Wait a second, they aren't out of reach. I forgot about the jetpack. I completely forgot that's a thing in this game. Let me just... Yeah, this is the good life. Look at me, being where the developers didn't want me to be. I'm one bad pretzel. I don't even have to drive to my next spot now. I'll take to the skies. Look at all those grounded, lesser beings, stuck to their ancient four-wheeled vehicles. They can't even comprehend my new method of locomotion. I'm the next stage in human evolution. I just gotta find the spot I wanted to talk about. Um... Uh, okay, this isn't even a bit. I can't find my next spot. I didn't mark the exact location on the map, so I'm not sure where it is. And considering I'm looking at the city from a different angle than usual, I'm having an even harder time. Maybe humans aren't meant to fly after all. Okay, maybe I can't find it at ground level either. Look, I have to find it. This spot is amazing. Just you wait, it'll totally be worth it. I didn't hallucinate this spot, it's in the game. I think. Oh my god, there it is. The fabled square holes of Rodeo. So majestic. What are they for? Why are there so many? Why are they so mesmerizing? Was it worth the trouble of trying to find this? Absolutely. There's an interesting bit of architecture at the Los Santos airport. There's all this, which is normal airport stuff. Kinda nice looking, I'll admit, but nothing super special. Then I realized this whole area is layered. There's a ground floor beneath all this. And look at how thin the ground is on top. It's practically paper thin. Is this possible in real life? Is this loosely based on an actual airport in Los Angeles? Am I stupid? Wait, don't answer that last one. We gotta drive all the way to the other side of the city for the next spot. This is another interior that you can re-enter for some reason after the mission is over. It's some guy's house that you have to steal from, and he's, uh, pretty eccentric, to say the least. He's got his cannon ready to blast away any potential intruders. Camo netting on the ceiling. A poster of guns, the confederate flag, yeah, that kind of guy. Oh, and he has this delightful painting of produce. Guess he can appreciate a good still life. He's got a plain old kitchen. I mean it, I don't think a kitchen can get more plain than this. Though could you even call this a kitchen? There's no oven, no fridge, microwave, anything kitchen-esque other than some cabinets, a sink, and a dining room table. Maybe he's a minimalist. Upstairs, we can visit his bedroom. Guess he's not home. And it's barely decorated in here, too. He must have spent all his money on that cannon downstairs. That TV placement is diabolical. Imagine trying to watch that in bed. I'm doing my very best to avoid showing an incredibly lewd and inappropriate picture he has on the wall behind me. I can't believe this game would include such a thing. Won't Rockstar think of the children? We'll head up to Red County real quick. This and Los Santos are the only big chunks of the map you can explore for the first bit of the game. And I don't want to spend too much time talking about the foresty, rural vibes of San Andreas just yet. I'll save talk about that for the next video where I cover San Fierro and the surrounding mountainsides. I do just want to shout out the small towns dotted throughout the mountain though, like Blueberry. I like the idea of a quaint little mountain town on the outskirts of a big city. You have some peace and quiet, but you're not too far away from civilization. You can definitely feel it's not as luxurious as the city it's close to. Houses are relatively small, the cars aren't as fancy and the street is a bit more dilapidated. People no doubt have their struggles in this town, but I'm sure as a whole, they enjoy the community. That is, when their liquor store isn't being robbed. 
I saw there was an area nearby called the Panopticon. I can't say I know exactly what that is, but it sounded cool as hell. I needed to check it out. I bet there's a cool building or something. Hidden in the mountains too? There's probably some secret entrance that leads to an underground facility I can explore. This is gonna be so... cool. It's just a bunch of huts and logs. I've been Smeckledorfed! I expected something awesome! I came to the Panopticon and all I got were some lousy logs. Let's head back to the city. Los Santos feels nostalgic to me. Which is weird because I only beat this game for the first time this week. I didn't even have a PlayStation 2 as a kid. The most I played of this game was at a friend's house for an hour or two. But I still feel a personal connection. Something about the aesthetic feels familiar. It's so warm and comforting. Starting up this game and just being in Los Santos feels like coming home. I imagine this was home to a lot of kids during their formative years, maybe even yours. This is such a big game and there's so much to do. I can imagine getting lost in this game as a kid. Hopping off the bus on a Friday after school, you run inside and kick off your shoes, ready to get lost in this city for a whole weekend. This was no doubt a second home to a lot of kids. Considering how infrequently you get games when you don't have a disposable income, you gotta make the most out of what you have. And even though I didn't have this game as a kid, I can almost imagine a parallel universe version of myself who played this game to the bone. I 100%ed this game, got the high score in every minigame, and truly explored every nook and cranny of this world. Because what else are you gonna do as a kid? Go outside? No thanks, I'll hang out with CJ and run over pedestrians. And no place feels more like home than Grove Street. This is the heart of the game. It's where your adventure is centered around for the first handful of hours. Because of that, I'd say this is maybe one of the most famous video game locations ever. San Andreas is literally one of the best-selling video games of all time, and a lot of the game is centered around this street. But how much of it have you truly explored? Have you went behind any of these houses? Nothing super cool, but you can count yourself among the few video game explorers who dared to venture here at all. Did you know you could play basketball? I didn't. Kobe! And there's all the holes Ryder was digging. What a wacky feller. This area is so comforting. This is CJ and Sweet's home. Their familiarity and love for the Grove transfers over to the player. I was wholly unfamiliar with this world when I started playing. And yet, Grove Street immediately felt like a place I've been my whole life. I never wanted to leave. Unfortunately, the forces that be had different plans. Keep an eye out for my next video where we enter the dark middle chapter of my San Andreas Tour trilogy. Thanks for watching.